Welcome back everyone, I'm Dr. Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com. Today going over lesson 6.20. And here we're going to start talking about reactions of alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyls. Now we've seen enough examples to know how carbonyls react with nucleophiles and how an alkene might react with a nucleophile. Specifically, the polar bond of a carbonyl leads to the nucleophile being attracted to the carbon of that site. And in that way, you can do a nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl, and we've seen this so many times throughout the course already. If you try to do that on alkene, it's still a pi bond like the CO bond is. You have a pi bond and a sigma bond there. If you tried to do the exact same kind of thing, first of all, there's no partial plus that would necessarily attract the nucleophile in the first place. If I forced this compound to do this reaction, I would have the nucleophile attached here, minus charge on a carbon, and that's quite unstable. We learned about the fact that carbon-centered anions are very unstable when we learned about organometallic chemistry in part five of the course. Well, what if we have both the carbonyl and the alkene functional groups right beside each other in the same compound? And specifically, the type of compounds I'm talking about are compounds in which the alkene, the unsaturated unit, goes from the alpha carbon to the beta carbon where we have the alpha carbon right next to the carbonyl. Now we have an interesting case because we can draw resonance contributors by moving conjugated pi bonds around to have a minus charge on the O and a plus charge on the carbon. Now what that means is that if I was to draw the resonance hybrid structure for this compound, I have some partial double bond character in all three of these positions. I have partial negative on the oxygen partial positive on this carbon because it's a part of a polar bond and then partial plus on this carbon as well because in one of the resonance contributors there's a positive charge. Now an interesting question comes up. If a nucleophile is floating by and we know that the resonance hybrid is like the real structure, we have two potential sites for attraction of the nucleophile. And I hope this reminds you of the previous discussion we had in section four of the text when we did addition to conjugated dienes where I don't have a double bond O like I do in the current case but we had a case where there were two potential sites for nucleophile attack and in those cases we had to decide between making a kinetic or thermodynamic product a 1,2 or 1,4 product and we're going to have a similar situation here as a result of the two electrophilic sites both attracting the nucleophile there are two potentially competing pathways we have the 1, 2 addition, and in this case, you always number the oxygen number 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. If we do a 1, 2 addition, we're going to add something to the oxygen, and we're going to add something to carbon that's numbered 2. So here's something added here and something added here. Now, in reality, we're always going to put a proton here. So we have this and this that are added. And in such a case, nothing happens between carbons 3 and 4 here in the net product. Now what if we have 1, 4 addition? Well if we have a 1, 4 addition we're going to have to draw our resonant structure like this plus minus add the H to the oxygen and add our X group to the carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. Again always numbering only the atoms that are in pi bonds. We're not numbering this carbon out here or any other chains that might be coming off of these sites. We're only numbering the atoms that comprise the pi conjugated system. So down here I've added H and X to atoms 1 and 4. So how do we tell which of these two cases will happen? Well it really comes down to your nucleophile. If your nucleophile is a very unstable anion it's going to be a strong base. A strong base is unstable. and We talked through the energy considerations in the primer using reaction coordinate diagrams in a little more detail, so you want to look at that. But if you have an unstable anion as your nucleophile, a strong base, stronger than hydroxide, let's say, then we're going to do the 1, 2 addition. So strong base, 1, 2 addition. That means that you kind of just ignore the fact that the alkene is even there and do the typical nucleophilic addition that we see for any other aldehyde or ketone. So we would draw our structure in, have the alkene there, Here's what used to be the carbonyl carbon. Added the R, pushed the minus charge onto the O, 
but then the O gets protonated in the acidic workup. Same thing here, if I have a hydride, we punitively think of this as H minus, a very unstable species. So we can think about doing the addition of the hydride species to the carbonyl carbon. Again, initially ignoring the fact that you have this double bond here at all. Protonate this in the acidic workup, and you've got your final product. Likewise, I could even take the acetylide anion that we learned about when we talked about alkynes. We talked about this in lesson 3.16. Use this as our nucleophile. Push the minus charge onto the O. Ignore the alkene even being there. Here is the carbon that was the negatively charged site in this acetylide. So it's got a triple bond to another carbon here, and then it has a phenyl group. And then of course the acidic workup protonates the anionic oxygen, and you'd have a neutral species like this. What about more stable species or very weak bases? Well, these will tend to do the 1,4 addition process. So you have to be a little more careful here. One, two, three, four. Say, well, what will happen if I take, say, my R, S, H neutral species and use it as a nucleophile here? Well, I'm going to use this like a nucleophile just like I would if it was water, let's say. I'm going to push the charge all the way up to the oxygen. Now, if I do that, I have O, and I have my sulfur added here with its R group. The double bond's been pushed here, minus charge on the O. And then you see this H has come off as H plus. I'm going to use that to protonate this O. I won't need a separate protonation step. Well, now we've accomplished R14 addition. The H is on atom one, which is oxygen. There's two, three, four. So we have the sulfur on atom four. And we might think we're done at that point, but the problem is we have the alkene and the alcohol going to the same carbon. That is an enol, which is not a very stable species. We're going to have tautomerization to change the enol to the keto form. So having the isolated keto form, it really looks like we just added the sulfur to atom number four, ignored the carbonyl, and got rid of the alkene that used to be right here. It's not what happened mechanistically, but it does allow us to quickly see what the product would be. If we use that strategy here and say one, two, three, four, if we realize the net result is that the nucleophile will add to atom four, and although we temporarily get rid of the double bond to the oxygen, it will come back during tautomerization, we can sketch in our molecule one, two, three, four, make sure we had to add our nucleophile to the correct piece numbering what had been the pi conjugated chain to make sure we attach our nucleophile to the correct atom, and we have the correct product. Now, of course, we've created chiral centers in these cases. You'll have racemic mixtures because, of course, the starting materials aren't chiral at all. Going down to example C, we can have the same approach. We can think through this process without having to draw the mechanism super carefully. We can take the Cn minus part of this ionic compound Say, okay, it's not a strong base, it's going to add here. Push these electrons up. You can scribble out the bonds that break or cross them out on your paper. Say, okay, I'm going to have a new bond here. Attach my cyanide here. So just really crudely drawing it in. Protonate this. And then you can say, well, this is going to tautomerize. So I'd have to have my compound looking like this. And here we did not create a chiral center because you have two methyl groups on the same carbon as the CN. Maybe I can draw it down here. Now I'm going to skip page 210. If you'd like to review enolate stability, we had talked about that pretty recently in lecture 6.15. And I just want to show you what would happen if I wanted to use an enolate as the nucleophile to react with this alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl, this new species we're talking about. Now, if I add sodium hydroxide, I'm going to deprotonate this species to make my enolate. I'm going to use that as the nucleophile. Now, the enolate nucleophile will always add to the four position. So you're always going to do the one four addition. And when you use the enolate as the attacking group on an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl, 
This is what we call Michael addition. You're going to add to the four position. So let's carefully draw this out because the Michael addition is such an important process. We're going to go down to box A. So here's the group that was the nucleophile. Right, here's that alpha position that had been deprotonated, alpha to the aldehyde. It's now attached here to what was atom 4 of that system. Now remember, when you have the OH and it deprotonates an alpha position, it makes water. So your water that's floating around could very easily donate a proton here. And that is how you get your initial species that's not something you can isolate. But you do have this enol right here. So hopefully if you make this species you'll recognize that that unit, that enol unit, will undergo spontaneous tautomerization. So actually your final isolated organic product would be nothing really happening to the aldehyde and tautomerization, but this unit has undergone tautomerization to become the keto form of that enol you had down there. So now you found a way to put two carbonyls on this molecule where you have the alpha carbon and then four, three, two, one. So you can always kind of think backwards when you see this and say, okay, I could have made that with a Michael addition process. Now one problem that you might think about when you look back at this Michael addition I just showed you is, well, if I add a base to this ketone or aldehyde, why wouldn't these ketones and aldehydes start reacting with each other to do the aldol addition and eventually the aldol condensation if we keep heating it? Well that is a problem for the Michael addition reaction. So you get some side products you don't want. One way to get around that is to use a compound that has two carbonyls so that you have a doubly alpha position here so that when you add the sodium hydroxide, you can deprotonate all of these without them reacting with other molecules like them and get 100% approximately this enolate. Because, as we discussed in our enolate lesson, we have resonance delocalization to help really stabilize that species. Now you can have that very stable species do the addition to that alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl, getting us to box A followed by protonation of that negatively charged oxygen to get us to the species in box B. But unfortunately that's an enolate, so you can envision that you're going to do the tautomerization like that. And then you probably want to try to draw out the species looking a little bit nicer than the strange wrapped around crudely drawn scratch paper diagram I show here. So I might recommend numbering the pieces that you need to put together, four, five, six, seven. Then you can just draw a chain that has the right number of, of units in it. So R be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you can draw it out kind of in a linear chain structure like most chemists would do. Now you just have to remember that coming off carbon 3 there's this extra unit. So I'll have to draw it down here. Not give myself enough room here. And then on carbon 6 you have a carbonyl. And then the last unit, 7, is actually this R group. So it looks a little bit more like the typical structures you would see drawn out with a computer program on an exam or in a textbook or journal article. Now you may notice that the product of a Michael reaction is a species that contains at least two carbonyls in it. And it'll contain three carbonyls if we use as our nucleophile a species like this that has that easily deprotonated, convenient, doubly alpha position. This means that once we do the Michael addition, we can follow up with an intramolecular aldol condensation. And people realize this could be used to make some really important compounds. So the sequence where you do the Michael addition followed by the intramolecular aldol condensation is called Robinson annulation. So let's just go through this quickly here. If we redraw the product of Michael addition of this species with this species like we did in the previous page, we will get the compound in box A. Now once we've accessed this species, we have a problem in one way because we have a variety of different sites. Let's just say these are simple groups like CH3. But our problem is that we have a variety of potential sites for deprotonation. Any of these sites could be deprotonated. But what we want to do is to have one of these
potential sites act as a nucleophile to attack this carbon too. So you're trying to attack this carbon that had been part of the Michael addition product. So I can't use this carbon to attack itself or the unit right beside it. I can use one of these. Now you could also deprotonate this site, but that would lead to forming a four-membered ring that's too strained. So while you will be deprotonating that a lot, it is the most acidic site, it won't do any subsequent reaction. So we're really only looking at productive reaction pathways. Now if I deprotonate this site and have it attack here, remembering that the aldol reaction, the condensation, leads to double bond formation between those two sites, we can try to envision what the product will look like here. All right, so let's think about that and draw this back in. And what we'll need to figure out is how big the ring will be that we make. If we start here, one, two, three, four, five, six, we're attaching to the carbon, not the oxygen. Then we should be able to make a favorable six-membered ring. I'll begin by drawing my cyclohexane core. Attached to carbon number two is the double bond O. The one makes a double bond to six. So here I'm assuming you know the aldo condensation reaction. And carbon three has the other carbonyl over here. Now you don't have to have a second carbonyl in your attacking nucleophile to do the Robinson annulation. I was just using the example from the previous slide. And we have this methyl group on carbon 6, and that should complete our Robinson annulation product.